everybody, this is Jim at uh, sp500chart.com using time-honored techniques to understand modern markets featuring daily technical analysis videos of the S&P 500 index. I just want to remind you that uh, the website and this video are for educational purposes only. Nothing stated at the site or in this video is intended to be used as investment advice. I can draw lines on charts, but you have to draw your own conclusions from your own research and make investment decisions that are suitable for your personal financial situation. I'm not a licensed financial professional. I'm just a guy who draws lines on charts. I would say this. Think of this as uh, uh, these videos as thought provokers, conversation starters with yourself and with your trading friends. Um, it's just one way of looking at it. So let's uh, go ahead and, and do that. This video is going to be uh, our weekly review as well uh, for the week ending November 25th, uh, 2011. So uh, I, I, for the new subscribers, I just want to recap that uh, we had this large head and shoulders formation that took roughly seven months to form. And uh, that broke down back uh, in August. And when it did, it did so pretty much with a vengeance. And those who were following uh, uh, the, the, the videos and the website at that time knew that, that we were looking for either a break of this top line or a break of this bottom line as a signal that the markets were getting ready to make at least a, uh, uh, I think it was about a 140, 150 point move. It was either going to be 150 up or 150 down, depending on which line got taken out. It was the bottom line, and we quickly uh, lost um, th that those points. Um, so t this whole pattern right here is a head and shoulders top. Typically head and shoulders patterns have uh, a, a pretty strongly bearish and highly dependable uh, outcome. What concerned me about this particular pattern is that it formed over seven months long, which leads me to believe just kind of on the general face of it, that uh, that this could be a, a significant turn in the markets. Um, you know, oftentimes in intermediate tops and things, you'll just go up and then you'll head straight back down, or you'll go up and bounce once, then you'll come down. But when you get that large pattern that takes seven months, uh, you have to you have to be on the alert that 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 is a a a potentially major turn. Uh, Anyway, we we uh, we did do that. Uh, did the breakdown? Entered this area of incredible volatility. Um, volatility, like the market, I don't think has seen statistically in a very long time, uh, if ever. And then we uh, rallied up off this uh, uh, 1080 bottom. And started to form what a lot of analysts and a lot of chartists were saying. This is some people even saying like this is the mother of all bullish triangles, like a big bull flag. Well, folks, if if you uh, if you tuned in uh, to these videos or if you are a member of the website, uh, then you would know uh, we were not looking at it that way. We were looking at it. We actually, with a predisposition that this that this uh, triangle pattern th uh, bounded between these red lines right here would likely uh, break down, and one of the main reasons is that this is the neckline of that uh, big head and shoulders that we were looking at a little while ago. Those necklines tend to be very, very stubborn resistance once they get taken out, and even though the market traded up over that neckline by uh, roughly uh, 15 points. Uh, on one day, and then uh, by just a few points on another day, since the the center of gravity, if you will, uh, of this pattern, since that center of gravity was underneath the neckline, it just seemed to me uh, that, that we should expect it to break down to the downside. Now, that doesn't mean that I was saying uh, uh, boldly back while we were in this pattern that this is definitely going to break down. Um, but there, in, in the last uh, few days of that pattern, you'll recall we were looking at this blue line, 
and, and saying to ourselves that if this blue line breaks, then it is likely that we come down and we test that red line, and it will probably break. And it did. So, looking at it from a weekly standpoint, uh, this was a short week in, in a short day-to-day. Uh, we just really had uh, the 21st, 22nd, 23rd, and then today to look at. Um, we ended last week in this little triangle right here. And, and again, there was no way of knowing for sure if this triangle was going to go up or go down until it did so. So we ended last week with kind of a neutral stance that we have to wait and see what's going to happen with this. Because when you break a, a trend line like this red line in the triangle, it's very typical to get a snapback or a pullback reaction to that line um, to kind of test it to make sure uh, that, well, did we really mean to go down? And then you tag that line, and then you head back down. Guys, that never happened. This triangle on Monday immediately broke down, then traded sideways for two days. At that point, we were kind of trying to uh, identify uh, a, a usable and workable uh, set of trend lines for this downward move. And originally, we had it right here. But uh, when on the 22nd, uh, the, the S&P got over this line, but then just couldn't get any steam whatsoever to actually break it. It just kind of oozed over it and then started sliding back down. That was really weak. And uh, we made the call on the 22nd that if the market could get over this uh, purple line at around 1198 or so, then we would likely see a rally. But we never did that. So that condition wasn't met. Instead, the markets broke solidly down. So that has led me to abandon this little area right here as, uh, as being the correct line uh, or excuse me, the correct level for this trend line. The reason is, is these line up perfectly with this. So we have one, two, three uh, touches on this top line, which is almost exactly parallel now to this bottom line. So I am leaving this line right here. I'm saying uh, that that is the line to watch. If the market comes up and breaks out over the top of this line, uh, then we are likely uh, going to be uh, heading up at least for a bit. How far? We'll have to just see it as it happens. Um, this black line down here at about 11.55, 11.56 is the minimum target uh, for the breakdown from this triangle. And uh, uh, again, when this broke down, and even when we were in this pattern, uh, we were saying that if this breaks down, then we can look for the 1150s uh, if the uh, uh, break is to the downside. We got the downside break, and we closed just barely in the 1150s. Um, I still think we tagged this line or more. I, I want to remind you that this is a minimum target. That doesn't mean that if we hit this line, you go, oh, boy, that's a buying opportunity. Maybe, maybe not. The, that's the reason why we uh, why we want to try to as quickly as possible establish a trend channel because once we get this trend channel then we can say with uh, with a fairly high degree of uh, of uh, I don't want to say certainty that's really not but a fairly high probability that if this uh, if this top line now breaks by a good strong move then Th then we will start at least some kind of rally coming off and out of this downtrend. So that's what we're looking at right now. Uh, really, the story of the week has simply been more weakness as this uh, triangle um, uh, heads down to its target area. Now, I want to sh uh, share one more thing with you. When we were looking at all of this, and pardon some of these lines that jump around just a bit as I as I zoom in and out of different time frames. We're looking at a two-hour chart now. And by the way, those of you who want to uh, see, uh, I, I had a comment. Someone said, "Please, you know, keep keep me up to speed on 
on what uh, on what time frame you're looking at, you should be able to see this line right here. So if if I forget to tell you what we're looking in, look up at this uh, upper left hand corner and see if you can read right here where the mouse is, where the cursor is. That that shows you the time frame of the chart. This is a two hour chart. Each candle is two hours of trading. But this is the deal. When when we were in this uh pattern uh, back here through August and September and even uh, mid-October, I, I made the comment that if this market rallies up to about 1240 or so and then pulls back down to this orange line and then begins to head back up, that I could see the market actually having a fairly bullish outcome from that. And what I meant was if we had come up to Again, about 1235, 1240, come back down, consolidated a bit more, then come back to 1230 and 1240 and take that out. I could see a move uh, to retest that 1370 high or at least get up into the 1300s. The problem is instead we came off this 1080 back in October and immediately zoomed up to 1295 with some consolidation here. But that, you know, to my way of looking, that was just putting a tremendous amount of, if you, if you will, a tremendous amount of inventory uh, in people's shelves. <laughs> if, if, I, I know that sounds strange, but that's just, that just created a, a, a really overbought condition. And uh, so I'm, I'm thinking now that we may be in for some really, really, really uh, uh, tough times in the market. I, I, I see this move that did not stop at 1230, then turn back down and consolidate, then move up. I see this move as really probably creating a more bearish um, setup in the markets than had we not run on up to almost 1300 so quickly. Does that make sense? I hope I said that right. And basically what I was looking at was there was a possibility that this could have turned into an inverse head and shoulders consolidation or call it a reversal and then a move up out of that. But it didn't do that. So right now, um, I've always just kind of felt that the, that the markets owed this orange line right here a back test. And... If we get that back test, guys, uh, it also means we are likely, unless that happens really swiftly and, and the markets give up uh, a bunch of points uh, in the next week or so uh, to get back down to the uh, 1080s, 1090s, um, if that doesn't happen, and it happens later and we end up taking out this blue line right here then uh, then I think the markets are going to be in a world of hurt um, I, I don't know any other way to put it other than that because what we would be looking at at that point I'm going to have to go to a longer range chart here what we would be looking at at that point is uh, is having broken this blue line right here that uh, would turn all of this for the past uh, two plus years into a large head and shoulders. So I think you can see wh where that concern comes from. I don't want to try to scare people, but I'm just uh, saying be aware of that. And by the way, I did a little video that said, but what if 1100 breaks? Uh, that had the idea that it probably wouldn't break for a while. But from what I'm seeing in the markets right now, who knows? So instead of saying what happens if 1100 breaks, I want to say what happens if this blue line right here breaks. Uh, if it does so, and this does act like a head and shoulders uh, top uh, that lasted more than two years long, then, uh, then the market uh, will, uh, should eventually be trading uh, in the 800s. Let's keep our let's keep our fingers crossed that maybe that doesn't happen uh, so uh, so swiftly. Uh, but if it does, it does. And our job is to follow this. Our job is to uh, keep up with the chart, and our job is to be prepared 
to know where these lines are drawn and what eventuality uh, will come out of a breaking of these important and critical lines of support and resistance. Again, just to remind you, just to, to kind of recap, um, uh, back when the markets were over this purple line, we were saying the whole time that if we trade down and break uh, 1270 uh, and get down to around 1260, that uh, that is an important line that, that will be setting up a, 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 uh, a, uh, uh, a loss uh, in the S&P down to at least 1150. Uh, I personally thought it would be more like 1120, and that's about where we got that first bounce was at 1120. Then we uh, started looking at this triangle with the idea that if this triangle breaks, uh, we're going to, and that would be a break of anything around the 12th, mid-1230s, then we would be looking at a trip down to at least 1155, and here we are at 1159. So what I'm saying now is if this blue line were to break, and, and you know, from the tra trajectory that we've been on for the past week and a half, I think that's a legitimate thing to bring up at this point. If this blue line were to break, then we would be looking with a longer term call, but we would be looking at uh, something eventually in the 800s. So anyway, look guys, that is the, uh, the, uh, uh, the S&P 500 update and, and call it the weekly review for uh, uh, the week ending November 25th. I want to thank, thank you uh, for watching the video, and uh, if you're a subscriber, uh, uh, I want to give you my extra thanks, which is appropriate for the day after Thanksgiving, uh, and if you're not, I, I hope you'll consider it. Stop by uh, www.sp500chart.com for the details. Oh, what the heck, I'll tell you what it is. It's uh, 1995 a month for a daily S&P uh, video update, just like the one you've seen here, or 189.95 for a year. I think that's pretty reasonable uh, for the kind of detailed analysis that you get. And uh, if you're a subscriber, again, thank you. If you're not, I would appreciate it if you would consider it so that next Thanksgiving I'll have even more to be thankful for. Thanks a lot.